So Prime Faces, uh, any Prime Face users here? Wow, good. Every year it's more hands. So uh, my name is Chad Taichiviji. I'm the uh, project lead of Prime Faces, uh, which we'll be discussing today. I'm the JSF expert group member uh, since JSR314. And my full-time job is Prime Faces. And uh, although I'm not active very much, I'm also a PMC member of Apache My Faces. And I, time to time, I speak in conferences like Confess and uh, act as an author and reviewer of uh, JSF related books. I'm also the co founder of Prime Technology, the company behind Prime Faces. So, um, the Prime Technology is uh, we are specialized in Java E and Agile methodologies. So, we mainly do two things, uh, two areas. Uh, one is consulting, training, and delivery regarding uh, with uh, Java E. And we most of the time use JSF and Prime Faces. And we have offices in Istanbul, Ankara. So uh, again, we do con trainings and delivery as well, in addition to consulting. Uh, our main product or open source project is Prime Faces and some other commercial offerings as well. But let's focus on Prime Faces, which is our current logo. So the Prime Faces is three years old. Um, the project started in 2008. Now in 2011, it's much more mature and far more advanced than what we have offered three years ago. Uh, it's a JSF component suite, like uh, so. Uh, it requires JSF for sure to run, and it puts a lot of uh, on top of JSF, like new components, new features, extensions to AJAX, and so on. Mobile UI kit. Uh, this is one of the ideas of Prime Faces. It's making it lightweight. Uh, we have used other libraries in the past. We've been using JSF since 2005, and uh, there, there are some points that we were not very happy and productive. So once we have decided to make our own JSF component suite, we have set some design goals like make it lightweight. So how lightweight? Uh, how do we achieve this lightweight? And uh, other goals. More on that later. So. Uh, lightweight is one goal. Another thing is easy to use. Uh, Prime Faces is developed by application developers. So we use Prime Faces every day for our clients. So it has to be easy to use. And this is one of another uh, design goal of Prime Faces. And Prime Faces is, is just one jar. And it's not a big giant jar, it's just 1.7 megabytes. And that is one how we achieve uh, lightweight. Uh, design goal of Prime Faces. Uh, so you, you just need to download the jar and um, install in your application and start using it. There are no required dependencies. Uh, so there are no, for example, um, sometimes you know we, we use all we use frameworks and a framework can depend on other frameworks, but this is not the case with Prime Faces. Of course, there are some optional dependencies for like data exporting to PDF, we are using iText, but for the core functionality, there are no required dependencies. Also, there's no configuration required, so uh, there's no you know, view under definition, navigation under definition, or any other web context parameter. So it's just uh, drag and drop, sorry, uh, plug and play. Uh, we just need to download Prime Faces, edit your class pet, and start using it. So who uses Prime Faces? Uh, it's been three years, and every year uh, we have more users, more companies, more uh, corporates. Uh, here are some, and lately more uh, you know, big clients like from automotive uh, sector. We have Ford, Volkswagen. There are some banks from Austria, um, multinational banks. Uh, telecom companies from like we're zone, uh, financial companies. Uh, so uh, mainly, I think uh, from what I see, they are using it for for the inter internal products. And JSF really goes well. Uh, so it really helps a lot to implement you know internal inter you know software running behind firewalls. So all of these corporates are some of them are also using it for their external uh, public uh, web applications, uh, but. Um, more and more, we are getting more uh, users uh, from corporates and other companies. Uh, so Prime Faces has been, you know, uh, realized as a, a skill in LinkedIn. So, uh, for example, when you just search for uh, Prime Faces in LinkedIn, you get lots of users. Uh, if you Stack Overflow has been a popular area where you can find lots of Prime Faces information. And for example, here's an a job advertisement I found uh, saying that uh, 
prime phase consultants are needed in Boston, for example. So prime phase has become a global uh, project. And if you see the popularity uh, compared with other uh, popular JSF libraries like Rich Faces and Ice Faces, for, I mean, when, when we talk about JSF components, since three names came up, which is Prime Faces and Ice Faces, Rich Faces. And since the project started in 2009, when we first made the first lease, the popularity has been going up, and others' popularity has been going down. Uh, well, uh, for, this is an interesting thing that we really liked when we see that in Facebook group. Prime faces. These uh, three users are from Colombia, and you you can see the Prime Face stickers on their cars. So it's nice to see that although we developed this in Turkey, on the other end of the world, people are you know uh, enjoying Prime Faces, and uh, like I did, they are using Prime Face stickers on their car. So there are 100 and more components, and it's counting. Uh, there are all sorts of c uh, components that are essential to an application, like tab views, accordions, buttons, and UI inputs. And there are some uh, not very essential, like uh, let's say uh, image cropper or photo cam, where you can take your picture, picture crop it, resize it. But uh, for example, we have the data tables, tabs, and charts, and so on. Uh, most of them, actually, all of them are developed using jQuery. Um, we were using Yahoo UI in the past, like two years before. Now we have moved all our stuff to jQuery. And the, re the underlying um, resources uh, actually uh, have been in prime phases too. We were using third party plugins like jQuery UI. But lately with prime phases three. Yeah. Sorry, when did you do this move? Which one? Uh, prime phase two. Yes, yeah, more than a year ago. Yeah, so uh, we moved to jQuery, and by moving, I mean moving, for example, rewriting that Yahoo UI dialog with jQuery UI dialog. But in Prime Phase 2, we realized problems with that. For example, you cannot update a jQuery UI dialog with JSF Ajax. It ends up in a corrupted DOM. So once we were wrapping all these libraries, we realized that we now can write our own JavaScript and CSS, and write it by JSF in mind, because all these plugins are not designed with JSF, you know, they are for everyone's use, PHP, ASP.NET, or other frameworks, right? So we needed our own JavaScript so that we can take advantage of JSF's programming model. So, all, for example, let's see, except charts, all of these components are written by prime phase developers, all the JavaScript, CSS, and so on. So um, another advantage of not wrapping third-party libraries is that uh, we can extend so that we are not limited to what that third library offers. For example, in jQuery UI dialog, you can just display it, but we have added maximize, minimize. For tabs, we have added closing, dynamic loading, and so on. So uh, this is the main advantage. Uh, and also, for example, prime phase data table, I haven't, I've never seen an advanced data table in jQuery libraries uh, compared to uh, data tables. So this is the main advantage of uh, prime phase components and why we have done this move in prime phase three. Uh, this is why it also took like one year developing prime phase three because uh, we have written a lot of JavaScript and CSS. Uh, this is something you can do with prime phases. Uh, this is called Mac OS X or Mac OS X. Everything you see on the screen is a JSF component, dialogues, this is live terminal, um, stack, doc, growl, and menu bar as well. Uh, we have also extended all these H components form with P components, and why we've done that to implement skinning, theming, and uh, some extensions like HTML5 attributes, is, uh, for example, for H input text, and so on. Also, uh, regular native HTML elements cannot support the things we would like to do, so uh, uh, we have extended all of these, and I think we are missing some select. Uh, there's there's one thing we miss. I'm I'm not sure what was the name was, but uh, we will edit as well. Uh, select some select component. So this is the design goal of prime faces: hiding complexity. A good component should hide the complexity by handling CSS, JavaScript, and AJAX, so that the developer can focus on the page author can focus on uh, the business. And but the page author should also be in control uh, by flex. For example, if you write your own application with jQuery, uh, you know, there's this discussion with component-oriented frameworks versus you know, right, doing this yourself using jQuery and so on. Um, so when we, when we use a framework, 
uh, at some point it's possible that we will lose flexibility because ha framework is handling JavaScript, CSS, and so on. So that um, the question is how we can keep the flexibility and keep the page author in control by providing callbacks. I think the callbacks is the best way uh, to provide hooks to the page author so that it can be extended. For example, here's an example with top view where you can have several tabs. Uh, what if the user would like to execute some JavaScript when the tab changes? Uh, you, you, uh, you can use the on top change JavaScript callback or what if you would like to execute some Java methods when a top changes you can use the Ajax callback PAJAX event change where we extend the client behavior implementation of the client which is a nice feature of JSF 2.0 client behaviors. Uh, all the CSS can be overridden. It's, they are documented in user's guide so that you can change look and feel. Also the uh, JavaScript API is uh, provided although not properly documented yet but it will be in soon. Um, so that I know many users who are extending prime face widgets. So if you like writing JavaScript you can just use the callbacks. If you don't like you can just use uh, the Ajax callbacks. Uh, here's how a prime face component works. Uh, for example, we have this Google Calendar like uh, schedule component. For example, when we when you use this schedule component with a backed value, uh, the component, uh, not every component does it, but in this particular component, it just renders a div. And every component, let's say almost every component in PrimeFace has a widget. Widget is like the you know, client side uh, cousin of a component. If we have a schedule uh, component as a Java class, we have PrimeFace's widget schedule JavaScript uh, class. And so prime faces create widget CV just creates the schedule widget and with this uh, attributes. So you end up having uh, seeing this. So widget time to time in this case handles generating the markup. So the server has lower load and the client has uh, is responsible for the rendering. And sometimes it is uh, more easier to render things in on the client side to adding divs and so on. Uh, also, all the components are using unobtrusive JavaScript, so you cannot see, uh, you know, like on click, on mouse, or on highlight. So HTML and JavaScript is separated, so the JavaScript is as added as a behavior. So uh, it results in clear HTML and clear um, JavaScript. So the widgets are responsible for rendering time to time adding events like mouse overs, mouse event clicks, and so on. For example, we have implemented the client behaviors of buttons or input components as JavaScript events, where we render the function and apply it on the fly, instead of using the on-click or on-mouse over uh, attributes. So uh, to sum up, a component and a widget is, widget is responsible for AJAX handling, AJAX communication, if there is. Uh, in case uh, there's some rendering involved, uh, um, rendering the markup, and finally uh, adding the behaviors. Uh, prime face, com I mean, JSF in general uh, used a lot by governments or financial institutions where, um, and lately accessibility has been more important. Um, so, since more banks, government organizations are using it, so lately with Prime Face 3, we are adding accessibility features to Prime Faces. For example, uh, if you see the tab component, all the uh, elements are uh, equipped with uh, et corresponding attributes, so that uh, they can be uh, read read by a you know, screen reader. And that, that's one part. Another part is uh, keyboard and mouse support. For example, if for disabled people who cannot use the keyboard, they can use it mouse and, for example, increment or decrement the input text. For people who cannot use the keyboard, sorry, mouse, they can just tap to the input field and use arrow keys. So uh, more and more components are getting accessible to features like screen reader, keyboard, and mouse support. Um, and yeah, uh, and I mean, there are lots of components, so it, it's taking some time to make all the components accessible. Uh, we have some HTML5 features. I mean, some we cannot live without. For example, the data attribute where we can add data to do HTML elements. It's really a lifesaver. Uh, we use Canvas for charts 
using the jqplot plugin forms uh, like you know this html5 attributes uh, for file upload is using uh, xml uploads sorry ajax uploads uh, web sockets are used by prime face push uh, media component uh, not using currently the media tag or video tag but it will use it as well um, a word on prime face ajax uh, it's blue but it's saying stand standard jsf2 uh, server APIs, there, there are no uh, custom uh, stuff on the server side. We are just using standard JSF2 API, so it means we are just sending the special keywords, the parameters, uh, saying that it's an AJAX request. On the client side, however, we have re I mean, we provide an implementation of the JSF client side uh, API using jQuery. Uh, sometimes, uh, I mean, we have chosen this path because uh, uh, I mean, jQuery is uh, performing well on cross browsers, and I think it's much more tested than uh, what JSF implementations provide. Um, but again, um, it's working well quite uh, for us. So, AJAX extensions, what we have extended, we have PAJAX instead of FAJAX. Uh, auto update is where you uh, can up auto update components. We have callbacks, selectors, which is a new feature, AJAX status. Uh, parser submit is a new feature of 3.3, .3, which is not available in 3.2. Also, we have a concept called request context, like faces context. So, for example, uh, FAJAX provides on event, on, on error, uh, but sometimes it's much more easier to uh, define these using like on complete. So, most of the time, uh, we realize that we are writing our JavaScript when an AJAX request completes. So, instead of checking the status with on event, uh, prime face AJAX is on complete. Uh, Asynchronous or synchronous events, whether or not to queue, and the global event, whether or not to trigger AJAX as component. So, uh, also we use PAJAX for custom uh, events as well, for custom behaviors. This AJAX status, uh, I mean, it's also easy to implement your own custom AJAX as component with regular JSF AJAX APIs, but Prime Faces uh, brings it out of the box. For example, if you have two faces like start and complete, uh, this image will be shown uh, when an AJAX request starts and that output text will be shown uh, when it completes. Um, we can use the programmatic approach if you like JavaScript or uh, not. Um, if you don't want to trigger the AJAX status, we can set global to false, for example. Uh, request context is like faces context. It's in thread local. Um, for example, if you uh, want to execute JavaScript, when the AJAX request is completed, we can use uh, request context execute a API. So if you'd like to hide the dialog, uh, when let's say you have a login dialog and you want to hide it when the user is logged in, you can say uh, hide the dialog and so on and implement other things in an AJAX request. Um, like partial view context in JSF, you can uh, update this like a helper. Uh, API, so we can say request context update. So you can define what to update on the server side instead of defining it on uh, using the um, update attribute. Notice that instead of render, we have updates. Uh, instead of execute, we have process. So we have been using that for some time and decided to stick with that, not to break people's applications. So it's the same thing. Um, so this is another nice feature we have added. So what if you'd like to scroll to a component after an AJAX update? So you have a long page and you have the data table at the below and you have the form at the top. So when you click a save button, the, the browser should automatically scroll at the bottom. So in this case, you can give the ID of the component and say, so when the AJAX request is completed, you will see a nice animation uh, of the scrolling. So all of these are, um, we realized these features when we were developing applications so, uh, and provide it back to the community. So auto update is instead of, so uh, we realized that uh, messages are updated quite a lot. So we have added this auto update feature. Uh, so whenever an AJAX request happens, the component is updated. Most of these auto update components are messages, grow, and so on. New feature, uh, which Keto helped me to uh, come up with. Uh, this is partial submit. Uh, you know, JSF provides partial processing. And if you have a long form, like let's say 100 input components, and if you are only interested in processing one, by default, FAJAX uh, you, you know, processes, like let's say executes uh, 
at this, meaning the current component who is the source, right? But uh, the browser, uh, sorry, the implementation will send all, serialize all this data to the server. So uh, a client of ours was complaining that there's some network load for big pages. So instead, what we did it was adding this parser submit feature. Um, so we are only sending what has been processed. So for long pages, it's, uh, it makes a difference. Instead of all these input components, PrimeFace is only sending what will be processed. I have a quick demo about it. This is a nice feature I'm, I'm uh, currently uh, working on, and it's working quite, fine, quite well. Uh, for example, in, you know, the, the JSF uses Find Component API to reference other components, so you need to watch out for naming containers and so on. Uh, anyone use jQuery selectors? Anyone work with jQuery? Yeah, most of us are using a jQuery anyways, uh, is de facto. So jQuery is a nice feature called uh, selectors where you can select, uh, you write a selector and say, um, for example, give me all the inputs or give me all the forms, give me all the disabled uh, inputs inside that panel, but not the select tags and so on. So we have just, um, let's say, ported that idea to the JSF and saying that, for example, how to update all the forms in a JSF page. Um, the syntax begins with at, like uh, the keywords of JSF. For example, the first one updates all the forms. So you don't need to give client IDs of all the forms on a JSF page. If you say all the for form, it will update. The second one is updating the first form on the page. The second one is updating all the components whose style class is MileStyle. So you can group your components with a specific uh, style class. Um, the, the fourth one is updating all the data tables. Um, th this one is updating all the input fields, but not the drop downs. So you have this um, great flexibility of what to update and process. And the last one is updating or processing. You can also use them for execute, updating input fields that are disabled. So this is a uh, handy feature uh, which, we, which helped us to overcome some tricky situations. I have a quick demo about it. Uh, resource handling, we have uh, optimized JSF resources, sorry, prime phase resources by minifying them on the build time com and merging them in, in one J JavaScript like prime phase JS and prime phase CSS and compressing them as well. So it's, although prime phase is a rich library with lots of JavaScript and CSS, uh, when you GZ, use, use gzip or some other tool, uh, it's quite small with like 25 kilobytes with all the components included. And we have also have on the fly loading, resource loading. So you, let's say you have some dynamic updates on a page uh, where you have a panel and you have, you I include which uh, the source evaluates to an expression. So you have two XHTMLs and depending on that, you are including that XHTML or you are writing, let's say, building the UI programmatically. In that case, uh, when the resource of a component is not found on the page, Prime Faces loads that resources uh, so that um, those resources are also available. So this is like intelligent resource loading, uh, which solved a lot of problems reported in our forums. Uh, let, let me show you a quick demo if you haven't already checked uh, Prime Faces and some new features of Prime Faces 3.3. Um, so this, was, this is parcel submit. So this is the log component. So I assume that we have lots of input components here. And this button is processing the whole form, yeah? So we can see that this uh, data being posted includes all the keys and values of all the inputs. But when the parcel submit is true, we are only uh, processing this field. Since it's true, prime faces only sends uh, a smaller portion, so it's just regular view state, so just that. So, uh, parser sub is really nice to reduce the network traffic for big forms, and this is the prime phase selectors. Uh, for example, we have a panel, and we have a drop down eight select one mini here. This one is updating all the panels, sorry, all the forms, the last form, all the panels. For example, this one updates all the input components, this one, all the input components inside the panel. So. All of them are processed. But this final button is updating um, all the input components, but not the select components inside that panel. And now we can use, since this is not processed, I didn't get a validation here. So 
selectors are quite handy. Um, so let me show you a quick, I think I have like uh, five minute demo time. Um, for example, this is a feature uh, we have added lately, um, like the Facebook uh, messages, um, where you can do a multiple um, uh, selection using autocomplete. So uh, again, we were using jQuery autocomplete, but it doesn't support any of this. So at some point, we need to write our own autocomplete component. And it is quite extendable, so you can invoke JavaScript or Java methods when something is closed, like using item unselect events. You can uh, hook in. So uh, since we have this ability to write our own uh, libraries, a client of ours requested a feature like this. So uh, whenever a mouse is over in an item, they want to display an tooltip, advanced tooltip next to it. So we have decided to implement this by adding this item tip uh, facet and so on. So uh, this is an example of uh, writing your own uh, JavaScript and CSS so that we can extend instead of wrapping third party libraries. Uh, we, we couldn't have done this if we were using jQuery or some other libraries um, autocomplete. Um, let's, um, for example, we have the buttons, uh, split button, this is an this was a user commit request where you can group uh, comments and so on using menus and menu items. Uh, this is a spinner I, I mentioned where you can use the keyboard or using uh, arrow keys. Uh, as I mentioned, we have extended all um, this regular um, components of JSF. For example, uh, if you were using the regular H select mom menu, you cannot make it editable as far as I know. So we have made this uh, feature called editable select one menu where you can select or uh, edit it, uh, which has uh, features for custom display as well, like autocomplete. Uh, we have the carousels uh, for displaying data where you have a couple of dates. Uh, this car example has been used a lot in prime phases. We have data exporter where you can customize the export data and um, so cast, uh, export it to PDF, CS, uh, CSV and so on. Uh, data grid components. Uh, so if you have some sort of data you can display it using various components like in grid format with Ajax pagination, with data table and data list like this in a list like UI repeat. And, or in a data table which has advanced features like uh, uh, resizable columns, reord reorder, column reordering and with Ajax callbacks. Also, as we have nice features like uh, in cell editing. R various ways of row selection, um, scrolling and so on. All of these are um, d designed with JSF in mind. So. Uh, they're working quite well. Um, let's see, we have the field sets, panels, lots of, I mean, all of them are grouped uh, with their uh, type. For example, we have this pick list where you can drag and drop or move things around. And well, let's see, light box where you can define. Well, I was, I'm still a big fan of Sopranos, so uh, where you can define, if you have a set of uh, images, you can use them. You can just, um, let's say, run uh, videos here. There are lots of trailers on PrimeFace homepage, so you can use iframes. So I know a user who, who is displaying some PDFs in Lightbox. Um, we have the menu components, uh, menu bars uh, with click triggers, and you can customize the behaviors. Uh, this is a new component, slight menu, like if you are, if you are using an iPod, this is the select one menu, sorry, uh, slight menu, and we have the tiered menu, uh, like a vertical menu bar. Um, dialogues, which is uh, used a lot in an application where you can minimize and maximize and apply effects as well. Uh, drag and drop. And file upload uh, has been a popular uh, component where you can define um, 
where you can drag and drop components on the top, uh, this file upload area, uh, and so on. Upload with simple uploads or advanced uploads, and growl component like the max growl, where we can. Sorry. If you are low on uh, page layout or if you need some space, you can use these com message components. Charts, uh, there are lots of charts and more charts are coming in new version 3.4. And let's see, we have drag and drop components where you can drag and drop things. Um, these are quite simple to implement. If you, since I don't have any time to show the code, just since uh, this is online, just uh, check it out. Uh, where you can do a lot of things. Uh, I was in Barcelona for a training, so they really liked these demos. <laughs> so um, schedule, which is a Google Calendar-like component, where you can. Um, th this one's using a third-party library integrated with uh, JSF. Um, I think that's it. So there are a couple of more things. Uh, let me show you request context. So. So you've realized that um, this, the page scrolled, and most what it does is it just executes some JavaScript on the server side, um, updates some components, and scrolls to that updated component, and so on. So it's quite handy tool, uh, which uh, we are getting nice feedback about it on Twitter and forum that it's quite handy. Um, so that was the component suite, um, which is what actually Prime Face is all about. Uh, Prime Faces theming is quite nice. We provide like more than 30 teams, and the theming uh, framework is integrated with jQuery Theme Roller, uh, so that uh, either you can download one of these themes from Prime Faces, which, which are just jars, and you just need to install, and or you can just uh, using use a theme roller, and without knowing CSS, you can design your own theme. Uh, Installing is easy. You just need to download the jar and set the prime faces theme context parameter. Uh, this can be an EL expression, although I missed uh, this DS here. Um, prime face showcase is, is itself dynamic. Uh, if you don't like uh, the built-in themes, you can, and if you are comfortable with some design, if you have a nice uh, perspective of design, you can just uh, go to the theme roller and design your own uh, theme with some buttons and color pickers. Download it and uh, you start using it. So, I know some uh, of our users who you know sit with their clients and uh, design the theme with them. So it's quite it fixes the uh, problem of uh, clients, what client wants from the UI and uh, so on. Uh, we are we will be shipping advanced themes. These are not created with Theme Roller, but the designer of Prime Technology. Um, so they are created in Photoshop, and they we will port them to uh, Prime Faces uh, theme, CSS. So uh, this is something we are currently working on, and this is one of the themes that will be available. Uh, this can be premium, so this, this could be uh, paid, but we are not sure. Maybe it will be free. We haven't decided yet. Um, so more themes are coming, and let me show you a quick demo of the theming. We also have the theme switcher component right here. Uh, let's see, theme switcher. Where you can choose themes. For example, at the top you can see the theme switcher. For example, we have also ported uh, some themes from other libraries. Like, for example, this is ah, you cannot see it, I guess, but this is the like the blue sky theme from Rich Faces. So if you are using Rich Faces and Prime Faces, they can look same. The components. Um, Casablanca is from Apache Trinidad. So, but uh, let me show you a darker theme so that you can see. So uh, this is a darker theme. Uh, there are lots of themes, more than 30 themes. Um, it's quite uh, easy to create themable uh, frameworks, sorry, uh, UIs. Which, and my favorite would be uh, Aristo, which is the default theme. And for others, you need to uh, download uh, the themes. So. Uh, so it is for your organization. It's quite easy to create uh, your own theme uh, for the organization's colors. I know many companies who did something like that. 
Uh, the Prime Face Mobile is a uh, it's a new project, sub module of Prime Faces. It's been like uh, for like five months since we've started started doing it. Uh, it's based on jQuery Mobile. Um, you can use jQuery Mobile with JSF, but it's uh, it will you it's likely to face problems. Like for example, uh, JSF's programming model of AJAX updates doesn't fit jQuery Mobile. So when you update a jQuery Mobile um, um, component enhanced component like buttons and selects, they lost their visual visuals and they uh, start looking like a regular plain uh, input components. So Prime Faces takes care of the integration of AJAX updates and, um, uh, and jQuery Mobile. Also, um, there's an abstraction between uh, jQuery Mobile internals, setting things up and so on. Um, so these pages which are also available in showcase are JSF pages, but when you open them in um, in a mobile device, if you configure the render kit, uh, they will look optimized in a mobile device. The good thing about JSF, which I'm a fan of, is render kits, where you can create a render kit instead of here we have created a render kit. Uh, if you use P command button in a desktop environment, it will render in a different style. If you use the same component in a mobile environment, it will uh, look like this, you know, this login button. So uh, we are using uh, JSF render kit uh, features here. For example, um, a mobile uh, page starts with a header and content and like this. And regular components like H input text, P input text can be used with P command button and P data list. And when you run them in a mobile page, um, uh, it will look something like this. The idea is that, um, so remember those sites where you, when you open in a mobile page, they redirect to the mobile version and display a link like navigate to the desktop version. It is the same. So it's not like when you open the same page and it opens up in, um, uh, you know, optimized way for mobile. But we have also some plans for that using the same XHTML for mobile and desktop. But uh, at some point, um, you need to write some view handler or something so that you can configure the render kit uh, for that page. Or maybe we will do it. We are not sure. But that's an enhancement coming. Uh, it's powered by jQuery Mobile. Um, it's power, it supports Android and iPhone and other uh, platforms quite well with some uh, level of support, of course. Um, quick demo of Prime Face Mobile. Uh, if you have a smartphone, you can just log in to uh, Prime Face Showcase and display. Uh, so, for example, we have this weather app where we can get uh, the weather from. Uh, Yahoo's uh, website. Uh, this is also integrated with JSF's navigation model. So if you return an outcome, uh, each page has um, views. So the main page is in main view, and the other is the settings view. So there are two views. Uh, for example, this action listener called retrieve conditions. Sorry, it was. Uh, save settings. Uh, just like in implicit navigation of JSF, if you return the name of this main form, sorry, uh, view, main, uh, Prime Face Mobile will navigate to that using on the client side. So it is tightly integrated with JSF's program model. If you return the outcome of the view, uh, it will navigate to that page. Um, for example, Twitter, which is uh, quite easy to implement using Prime Face Mobile. Um, whenever an Ajax, JSF Ajax or uh, Prime Face Ajax request happens, you see that it's the loading bar, which is integrated with jQuery. Um, also, one final demo. Uh, let's see if we have maps, sorry, news. So again, this one is integrated with Yahoo News. So it's an alternative if you have some mobile requirements, uh, which is worth looking. And we will 
uh, have more features for mobile, like lazy loading of the wheels for mobile devices to reduce traffic. And the last um, sub-module of Prime Face is Prime Face Push, which we are working on. Um, but we haven't focused on that for some time after uh, Prime Phase 3 came, came up. So uh, we will uh, focus on that starting from 3.4. Uh, it's currently support, it was supporting uh, atmosphere. And uh, so, but lately uh, we are just supporting web sockets. And Prime Phase Push is uh, currently only supports Jetty. So you can run your JSF application in with any container, but the push server has to be separated. and. Uh, it has to be jetted right now because it's, I think um, it, it just fully supports WebSocket right now and more containers are supporting it. The problem is there's no WebSocket standard. Uh, so it's a problem for us as well. Uh, we cannot use common APIs. So we need to support different containers with different um, um, classes. So the application pushes, uh, the JSF application pushes back to the client and the client goes to the push server and the push server pushes back that data to other comp uh, clients. For that, we need to use the pPush component with the channel, like the topic. And at, that, at some point, uh, this JavaScript call on message will be called with what has been pushed. Uh, you can push objects and strings using request context push API. Um, a quick demo. This is the counter where you can uh, push a button and wh who's, whoever is connected will be notified. So here, the simple call is to say, um, here, request context, push uh, to that, push that new number to that channel. Uh, there's also other, another um, sample, which is uh, chat, which is, I mean, a common uh, example, right, of applications. This is a bit more complex, but quite easy to implement. You can see that, uh, let's say, uh, Chrome, and this is Safari. Uh, these are the browsers and Firefox supports WebSockets. So Chrome, and they can start talking. And we can also have a mobile uh, client for this. Who? <laughs> Oops. And so on. Okay, so I will, not, I will stop. Uh, it's just like a monologue. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I work on Starbucks or some cafe and working on this stuff, and people look some weird looks at me with two chat screens and the guy's talking to himself. <laughs> Uh, future of Prime Faces push is not clear yet because uh, we are getting feedback that it should support more browsers and more containers. Uh, so we are switching back to Atmosphere. Um, so this is something we need to decide and do some proof of concept work. Uh, but right now it only supports client peer-to-peer -peer communication. It doesn't support JMS integration and so on. So. Uh, if you are planning to use Prime Face Push, uh, just maybe it's, it's a bit good idea to wait for some moment or, or look for other alternatives. But this proof of concept work is uh, working quite well, and we need to decide if we should reinvent or integrate. Uh, portlets, Prime Face has good support for portlets, and some good news about Liferay. Uh, Neil Griffin, who, is, uh, who has moved to Liferay recently, and uh, who is saying hi to all of you, which I have emailed today and saying that we are in uh, Confess. Uh, he's saying hi and he's saying that um, Prime Faces, uh, we are working with him lately since he moved, he has joined uh, Liferay. Uh, the project is, it was Portlet Faces and now it's under the umbrella of uh, Liferay. Um, for example, there was a problem with file uploads in Liferay and 
Uh, last week we have figured it out with uh, communicating with him. He, he fixed, he's, he's done some changes on the port, bridge part and we have done some changes on the prime phase part. So file upload, advanced file uploads are now supported. So this is something uh, nice. Also, uh, we are planning to improve our relationship with LifeRay uh, in the future uh, with the partnership or so on. Maybe we'll see about that. But right now we are working with uh, LifeRay uh, team, uh, sorry, Neil mostly. Uh, to work out on issues. Uh, Martin, Neil says hi to you. I have emailed him today and saying that we were in Confess, Neil Griffin. So he says hi and uh, he says cheers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Prime Faces supports cloud. Uh, mostly we have tried uh, Prime Faces on AppSpot, but it should support others as well. We, have, we haven't actually tried, but uh, I mean, PrimeFace doesn't do anything to not to support it. I mean, it's GSF. Since GSF2 supports cloud environments like App Engine, uh, it should work fine. And there's two examples uh, on the web. Uh, documentation is quite fine, and it's 450 pages, more than. Uh, it's currently is a, is a PDF uh, application. Uh, PDF, PDF, P, uh, PDF file. Uh, where you can find all the components. For example, let's check what is accordion component, uh, all the types, attributes. These are also generated as a VDL uh, document. Uh, how to use dynamic loading, uh, client-side callbacks, behavior events, uh, how to implement dynamic number of tabs, disabling tabs, multiple selection, client-side API, uh, skinning if you are going to uh, extend uh, Prime face. But for the thing I missed in the skinning part is you don't need to know uh, UI accordion, UI accordion header, UI accordion content to overwrite the CSS of accordion panel. S these, these are called the structural CSS, which displays like the paddings, margins, look and feel. And the colors, we call it skinning CSS, define the colors. So you only need to know about UI widget content, which is an abstract, a general. Um, CSS class that applies to all contents. So this uh, UI widget content applies to panels contents, data tables, rows, field sets content. And the UI widget header applies to menu bars, any kind of header. So you don't need to actually know about these for regular skinning, but it, they are good to know if you just want to overwrite the, the paddings and just change the structure. But for regular colors and stuff, uh, they are separated structural CSS and skinning CSS. So this is the user's guide. This goes on and on for uh, 460 pages. We are also planning to release an HTML version soon, hopefully, if you can provide the uh, export it. Uh, Prime Faces forum is quite active. It has reached 60,000 uh, posts. And it's sometimes it's like a chat uh, channel where you can re refresh and new uh, posts came up. For example, let's see. Uh, we have 10 minutes, so I think we have time. Let's see what's going on in the PrimeFace forum. So, you, so, um, so, a lot of new questions today. And uh, since there's a real community behind this project, people are discussing the problems uh, with each other. So, we don't have to, you know, uh, pop up, pop in the forum and. Um, support people also I mean we do that when we have time but uh, since we don't have the time to answer everyone people are helping each other which is uh, quite important for an open source community right uh, this is something uh, nice with NetBeans we uh, are working with NetBeans team for uh, improved integration starting from NetBeans 7 prime phase is included so when you download NetBeans uh, you can choose prime phase from the components tab and lately, um, uh, the NetBeans team, uh, who also uh, visited uh, uh, Ankara, where we live, uh, we have uh, done a small meeting, and we are also uh, in communicating via emails. They are uh, they have more ideas to improve the Prime Faces support, and we have um, a Prime Faces topic, like uh, they asked us to collect some feedback. So here, uh, feedback for NetBeans. So they are, NetBeans team is monitoring this topic and to improve the NetBeans even further. And 
but for other um, IDs like Eclipse and IntelliJ and so on, uh, they also support prime faces by using regular JSF support like the code completion and so on. But we have some special uh, relationship with NetBeans guys. Um, if you need some enterprise um, services, uh, this is quite important for organizations where, they, where an open source project is used. Um, support is provided via private Jira account and uh, trainings are, there are some private trainings and public trainings uh, around the world. Uh, we also have partners in, for example, in US, uh, Norway, uh, France, in South America, uh, South Africa, and uh, in Korea, and more partners are coming. Um, so if you need a service somewhere, uh, it is easy to find, and it's easy to get it via partners or from us and also consulting as well. So this is, this is the enterprise side. So it has a strong backing uh, of, um, of a company like Prime Technology and the partners. Uh, there are some scaffolding features. Springru uh, supports Prime Faces generation. Uh, it was a long story, but it's finally real now. Uh, JSF 2.0 on which was a popular uh, feature request. Uh, it supports uh, generating JSF and Prime Faces screens. Uh, only prime face supported, and we again have a special uh, relationship with Spring Source, where uh, we, uh, Alan Stewart, the lead of uh, JSF, sorry, Spring Group, we uh, in touch with him uh, to improve the integration. So whenever he uh, has a problem, he sends an email to us, and we work with him uh, to figure out what what's going on. Um, there are also two more uh, tools: My Eclipse for Spring and Spring Fuse, where you can uh, generate. Uh, applications on the fly. Uh, I'm not aware of a scaffolding tool for like CDI, so maybe, maybe or hopefully someone uh, will step up to create something like that. Uh, the roadmap, my final slide, uh, it's currently Prime Phase is on 3.2, and we were supposed to release Prime Phase 3.3 yesterday, but all this traveling and stuff since I was responsible for the releasing. So hopefully we will release 3.3 release candidate soon, today or tomorrow. And we will keep on Prime Phase 3, uh, not jump to Prime Phase 4. Uh, I'm, I don't see any uh, major reason to do a major release. Um, there is a new book coming up, Prime Phase Cookbook. Uh, the authors are uh, one of my, my colleagues, and the other is a well-known committee member who is maintaining the Prime Phase extensions projects. Also, Prime Phase has an extension project, which has 20 more components. So, um, so they are writing. They will be writing the Prime Phase cookbook, which has lots of recipes on how tos. And our our goal is to make Prime Phase the de facto standard of JSF components. So, whenever people are evaluating JSF, uh, Prime Phase should be you know the de facto standard and should be used. Um, so, this is one one of our goals. Um, so uh, it's going very well for Prime Faces. Um, we have lots of new components and features, uh, more users every day and more topics. So it's reaching the technology peak, and we are enjoying it. So I hope you also enjoyed my presentation. <laughs>